Today I'm going to show you how to make two beautiful celebration cakes. An orange almond cake that looks like an Italian wedding cake with an Italian meringue buttercream piped all over it. And this four layer Genoise cake with passion fruit buttercream of superb and flavorful cake. Both of these are not too difficult to make and I'm going to show you how today on Martha Bakes. I'm going to show you now how to make a Genoise cake. It's very similar to a sponge cake, but there are some subtle differences, and I'll talk about those differences as I get into the recipe. First, prepare your cake pan. One nine by three inch cake pan, and use this special Pam baking spray. This has flour in the pan. Fit it with a parchment round, and then very lightly spray the bottom. Your pan is ready. And you can put that right on a baking sheet on a rack. And now break five large eggs into the bowl of your mixer. Add a half a cup plus two tablespoons of castor sugar. This is super fine sugar or extra fine sugar. So a half a cup of sugar plus two tablespoons. And you're going to heat these eggs and the sugar over some simmering water right in the bowl of the mixer. You want the sugar to melt and just warm the eggs. We're not trying to cook the eggs. There, I think that is warm enough. And you can put this right on the stand mixer. And then start beating the warm eggs and sugar. They will get very voluminous. This is your leavening. This is what's making this cake rise. There is no baking powder, no yeast, no baking soda. And we have six tablespoons of melted butter. Add to that one teaspoon of pure vanilla extract to the melted butter and just stir that up. Leave that here because we're going to lighten this with a little bit of the batter before we add the butter to the mixture. So see how voluminous this is already becoming? It's very exciting. You can now sift your dry ingredients. Sift a half a cup of cornstarch to two thirds of a cup of cake flour. And just to be sure that this is all incorporated, whisk it around. That's your dry ingredients. Dry ingredients, butter, eggs and sugar. Now, Genoise is unique because you warmed the egg and the sugar. A sponge cake does not use the whole egg uh, as we did here, but rather you separate the yolks from the whites and you beat them separately. Uh, and the egg whites are really the leavening agent, but the warming helps with the leavening agent for the whole eggs. This whips for five minutes till it's really light and fluffy. Now let's see if we have some ribbons. You can see that the cake batter is falling back on itself in nice golden ribbons. Now to lighten the butter mixture, just put a little bit of the batter right into the butter and fold this in. This lightens that butter instead of having it fall all to the bottom of the cake batter. That's good. Okay, so now a little bit of the flour, just sprinkle it over the top, fold it in with your whisk attachment. You don't want to deflate the cake batter. And now I think it is time to use your rubber scraper. You can add this butter mixture now. Oh, nice. It smells very good. This is a delicious vanilla-y batter. And add the rest of the dry ingredients. I remember Mrs. Bridges making her Genoese cakes. That's what she called the Genoise. She was constantly baking Genoese cakes. And now pour this into your prepared pan. And it comes up about halfway. This will ultimately be turned into a four layer cake, this one layer will be big enough to cut into four half-inch layers. 
And there. This goes right into your prepared preheated oven, 350 degrees for approximately 20 to 30 minutes. Just watch it. The layer is baked, it's out of the pan. So I want to cut this cake into half inch pieces crosswise. Put the cake on a board. And if you want perfect layers, you can make a contraption like we figured out. This is a half inch piece of wood and we stuck some dowels into our breadboard. This has little holes underneath and that is affixed right there. And so if you use this big knife and lay it flat on these pieces of wood, you will get your first half inch layer. This is not yet a product, but it could be, and it should be. There. So you have your first layer. And it is a very, very nice cake and then just keep proceeding. So much fun. If you have a handyman husband or you're handy yourself in this shop, make one of these. So we have our four layers, bottom, middle, middle, top. And the cake for decorating should go on one of these Lazy Susan cake stands. And for me, this is a little bit low, this wonderful Lazy Susan, so Again, I improvise, and I just turn, turn a cake pan, and that raises it just to the right height for me. And here is our bottom layer. You're going to keep the whole cake on this white cake round. And now I do do this. I put little pieces of parchment paper underneath the cake because you keep the Lazy Susan clean of all frosting. You can just pull these out when you're finished. It's very handy. So there. Uh, and we have the frosting almost done. This is a very rich Swiss meringue frosting. And I'm going to be adding now the passion fruit curd that's made with a puree of passion fruit. Tastes just like fresh passion fruit. So get all of this into your icing, and your icing is ready to spread. Dollop on some, this will be the filling. And you just spread this half an inch thick. It's a very nice firm frosting, uh, and it does spread very nicely. And add your next layer. If it oozes out on the sides a little bit, that's okay. That will become part of the crumb coat. What that means is you are actually eliminating the possibility of crumbs in your final icing. And now for the top. Just put that on, lovely. And now this final coating, well, next to the final coating, is the crumb coat. And once you get this on and evened out, chill the cake and then do whatever decoration you're going to want to do with your frosting in a pastry bag. And for the side, you just run it around like this. So here we have our crumb coated layer. Get this right into the refrigerator to chill a little bit before you proceed with your final coat and final decoration. It just takes a couple minutes, like 20 minutes or 15 minutes in the refrigerator to firm up. You can do beautiful stars all the way around the edge. I'm guiding with my left hand, squeezing with my right hand. Now you can go all over the top with this star tip and you can just do dots all over the top like dotted Swiss. A steady hand. Notice that I'm really almost on top of the cake. It really helps when you're decorating, not to be bending over, hurting your back, making yourself tired. Put on some good music and have fun.
And then take your pretty tip and go around the edge. So now, when this is done, get it right into the refrigerator, let it set, and take it out about, oh, maybe 20 minutes before serving, just so that the icing all becomes the same temperature. Passion fruit icing on a beautiful Genoise cake. The orange almond wedding cake. It is perfect for birthdays, perfect for weddings, it's perfect for any celebration. The pans should be prepared before you start the cake. The recipe fits an eight inch cake pan as well as a six inch cake pan. Butter with soft butter, room temperature, not melted. And uh, line the bottom with a parchment round and butter the parchment. And now just a little bit of flour in the bottom of each and shake it around like that and go all the way around and it will coat the sides of the pan nicely and then bang out the excess. There, you have a very nicely buttered pan. You want just a dusting of flour on the whole thing. And now for the cake itself. We have six egg yolks in this with the wire whisk. And to that, we're going to add one cup of sugar. Add it slowly. Now this is really a sponge cake because the egg yolks and the egg whites are beaten separately. As opposed to the Genoise cake, or the Genoese cake, or the Genovese cake, as some people call it, which has heated eggs and sugar, which then become extremely frothy. So let this beat. And in this mixer, we're going to beat the egg whites with a pinch of salt and three tablespoons of sugar. If you're gonna turn this cake into a wedding cake and have to make lots and lots of layers, you can do that about three days before the wedding, or even longer, and you can freeze the layers once baked. But make sure you wrap them really, really well. So this is beating, this is beating. Now you can add your strained fresh orange juice to the egg yolks and sugar. Oh, it's really good. Fresh orange juice is an absolute must. Do not try to make this cake with carton orange juice or frozen orange juice. It does not taste the same. And we also have the zest of two bright skinned oranges. Now I'm going to scrape down this bowl. And I think I will turn that down. And now add a half a teaspoon of almond extract. Just a half, don't put too much. And now you can add your almonds. One and a half cups of finely ground almonds. Get them well incorporated, but don't overbeat at this point. And now this is how I add the cake flour for this kind of cake. I turn my mixer on and add one and a half cups sifted cake flour. And the half cup. If I look serious, it's because I am. You don't want to make any mistakes with all these fantastic ingredients. And we are going to stir in our melted butter. The butter is melted. It is one cup of melted butter cooled. Little by little, add the butter. There. You can take your bowl off the stand now. And I think our egg whites are ready. Stiff peaks, perfect, but not dry. And 
and with a large rubber scraper, fold a little bit of the egg cakey mixture into the egg whites. The egg whites are the leavening. This is what's going to allow the cake to rise and get the rest of it in. Mm, this is so beautiful. And don't start licking the spatula because you're never going to stop. It really is tasty. So there. And we have an eight inch and a six inch pan prepared for appropriate amounts into each. About three quarters of the way up. It helps to have those fabulous farm eggs. It makes the cake look even more orange. So there you have two very nice layers. Get those into your 350 degree oven. Set your timer for 25 minutes. These will probably take, oh, closer to 35, but check at 25. And now our layers are baked. They are cooled. They are ready to frost. We're gonna make this a two layer cake. And if you'd like, so that you have a prettier, straighter layer, you can take off that bump on the cake. And this should be put into a waste bowl for somebody to snack on, because it is delicious. And uh, you can do the same to this one. Just take off that little bit of brown and do the same to the bigger layer. So here we have our cakes, and now we can fill them and crumb coat them. Put the layer on an appropriate sized cardboard, and we have our Italian meringue buttercream as opposed to a Swiss meringue. Italian meringue is made by boiling sugar and water together and then beating that sugar syrup into the egg whites and then adding the butter. That's an Italian meringue. A Swiss meringue buttercream is where you heat the egg whites and sugar and then beat them into the meringue and add the butter. So two different techniques. This is such good frosting that uh, you'll want to put quite a bit in between the layers. And this makes a plump, pretty layer. This could be the top knot of a giant wedding cake, or it can be just, as I said, an individual small wedding cake, beautifully decorated. And what I'm going to do now is apply a crumb coating, which really basically is an undercoating for a final decoration. And you get this as smooth and as perfect as you can. So here we have a very nicely crumb coated cake that can go right into the fridge. Do the same thing to the larger layer. So you can see I've been starting to decorate using a round tip to crisscross the entire top of the small layer. And I've done vertical rounds on the side of the cake. And then I think I will basket weave the sides. I think that will look very pretty. And what you do is go over, skip every other one and go all the way around and so on. But that's what a basket weave looks like. And then you can do a pretty edge all the way around the bottom and get that into the ice box to chill. I'm doing a very simple basket weave on the top of this cake using the number 48 tip for both the under part of the basket as well as the over part. And it's all fun. And it's fun to experiment with the tips a little bit and some leftover frosting before you start actually decorating a cake. Make a pattern. This is going to be a very rustic main basket. How's that? <laughs> You can make excuses too if your work is not quite up to Sylvia Weinstock, the great cake maker in New York. So this looks very pretty. And uh, you can do um, a pretty edge of dots if you like on this one. And you can make cakes for your friends. One of the best wedding presents you can give a friend is to make a wedding cake. And I've done that many times. And you can dot all the way down the side like this, maybe every other row. But this frosting is so delicious that the more you layer on, the better the cake. 
They're almost finished. So you see, you can make a cake that looks really pretty very simply. And uh, you just need the right cake, the right frosting, a couple of great tips, and a lazy Susan, which really simplifies the job. So today's show, two great cakes, two great flavors on Martha Bakes.